today's plans is to fit the pump as you can see it's sitting there <coughs> to the pump from the valve to the pump now I'm led to believe that this will work because this is above the water level so somehow we've got to get that full of water and the pipe full of water from the pond I've got an idea so what I'm going to do I'm going to set this pump up set my idea up and then I'll get back to you and show you yeah, we've uh, got over that problem hopefully so what I've done before I start disconnecting my pump and my filter obviously that ain't going to be running now for maybe an hour just make sure you've always got your stuff ready for what you need jubilee clips from your pipe fittings make sure everything's all ready before you start turning filter systems off make sure you've got enough jubilee clips i'm not happy with them jubilee clips and galvanized i have got a tub full of stainless Probably the only one. They're all too small. No, too small. Yep, so I have got some tab to cover one up if I've got to put one in the water on the retro bottom drain. So what I'm gonna do is get everything ready, sort my retro bottom drain out and start setting it up and then show you what I'm, where I'm at well I haven't even set up yet and I've got my first snag here's my retro bottom drain that sits on there put you down a sec Sorry about that. So, it's either stick that in there like that, but then the pipe's going to be running across the top underneath my water like that, on the top under the surface. Or, fit that onto that. Fit that into that. So then the pipe will come down along the bottom of the pole and then up put more, more pole there chamfers like that and I don't really want the pipe under the surface and the snag that I've got and this drives every, everybody insane so many different fittings the pipe I've got now that I've had off Craig don't fit on there. Too big for that one. It's too big for that one. And too small for that one. They were in the mood to do it anyway. And now they're more pissed off. Because the old tiles I've got here, I'm a smaller diameter than that, and I've already got a reduced the collar there to fit that. Because that, that'll fit in there. No good in there. The joys of keeping Kai not. Well, tip I'd like to share with you when cutting your house tiles up. I've noticed a lot of people clamp that in a voice, squashing this, causing damage. 
If that's the one you're cutting off, clamp that one. Because you're not going to use that. If you're cutting that one off, clamp that one and cut it off. That way this part here, the most important part, you're not damaging. So I'm going to put that in there now. And cut it off to there and see if I can ream the hole out, out and bigger rather than cut one of them off there because them clamp onto the hours. I'm going to try and warm the hours up and see if I can get the hours on. But uh, I very much doubt I can get it on, but I'm going to try. I've got no option really because the other hours tiles, this diameter is a level a lot smaller. I think that's inch and a half and the other one's an inch. So if I go and buy another one of these, it's going to be exactly the same size. So I'm left with this, see what I can do. I've cut the old tail off. What I don't need, and as you can see, if I do the seat, if I turn it that way, you can actually see a collar inside, which I need to remove that to get the right diameter. Luckily, I've got that to put in there to shape it. Okay then, I don't want to clamp this really. I don't want to damage it. How many people have got a tool like this? Very careful, this is steel and very rough. You, know, you can see that on camera, nice and slow. Take it nice and steady, stop and check. You can still see the colour in there. You can also use, I don't know, the little feet. If you've got one of these, I'll call it a pyramid drill. You can put that in. And that steps down. But take it nice and easy. The last thing you want to do is break through the collar. And you've got to be careful with these as well because you can tend to, if you've got your drill dead square, you can take more out of one side than the other side. I'll just stop and look. Getting close now. about the radio as you know we've got the builders next door nothing not do about it okay so I'm almost at the end now you can still see that in there just a very fine thin piece there so what I'm going to do now rather than damage the collar is to get a bit of sandpaper quite, quite rough this one I've got here but Up with the hose fits on this connector. in there now look nice and clean I'll give the proper flow that you need in that diameter next step I don't know whether I can film it it's hard trying to do it on your own as you hear other YouTubers say just try and get some sort of heat I've got a a battery heat gun I might try and put that on the rubber hose and force it on I'll try a couple of different things and see what happens I'll see if I can record it for you well as always Kalpi Sky things never get to plan I've heated it up and I've got it on the fitting but I'll to turn you around now and show you what's happened now that I hot it's just blowed holes and you can actually see them so 
So the next test is put it in boiling hot water and see what happens then. So what I've done, you can see the holes in the pipe. I'm checking the pipe just on this short section. I don't know whether you can actually see. Almost like saw marks. So I don't know whether that's weakened it. I don't know whether you can tell on the holes there. You can actually see where there's an hole. There's like a slight score mark where the holes are. So I'm assuming that's just a little weak piece where it's been dragging against something or and as you can see if I turn it round there's even more there look so I've cut that piece off back to a fresh piece so what I'm going to do I want to try it in hot water because that is thick pipe and it shouldn't have gone in all like that so plan B as always and then I'll get back to you you've probably seen this a thousand times before on YouTube videos the heat penetrates the rubber makes it softer and applicable. You now the beauty about heating the, the one up just it's gone on easy and it's come off easy which is what I'm hoping to do because the last thing I want is the pipe to be stuck otherwise sticking my water pump on the bottom is going to be an issue so I'll warm this up and see what happens so the answer to that question with the hot water is a big no no it's not uh, it's not touching it at all I just can't get it on so what I'm going to do plan C back to the this is plan C trusty mug who's that handsome fella crack it's the kettle I'm using in the house is one cup kettle. It's never been no good since the day before it. It's not very old. I've all changed the kettle because we've got mason. There's no need to have the water as hot as what we normally boil it. Because we put milk in to cool it down. It's a strange thing to do really. This kettle is the old kettle that I've kept in the uh, man cave. So I'm going to boil that kettle first because that one gets really hot. Well, I'm showing you the kettle so I'm going to boil that one because I know that gets extremely hot the water I've just put in there I've tried out the kettle the kettle's not hot enough, it's hot enough for the drink which is what you need it for and I've, even, I've also tried it <laughs> chatting bubbles I've also tried it out of the combi boiler which believe it or not gets hotter than my kettle so this is plan C as you always know I've always got the alphabet to turn to. Cheers me dears. While I'm waiting for the kettle to boil, this is the reason, I, the start of this video, this is the reason I've not disconnected my, my filter, my pumps or nothing. I'm trying to prepare everything ready so I won't disconnect it. I, by the time I've messed about just with this one fit and allow it, you're probably looking at 45 minutes to an hour, which means that'll be an hour without your filtration working. Obviously me, I'm okay, I've got the green filter running, so even when I turn my Nexus off, I've got a backup filter that's, that's running, so it's not so bad. But as you know, the temperatures now, they're up and down daily. Yesterday, thunderstorms and torrential rain. Today, it's boiling red hot already and with money on, half past ten. You probably just heard the kettle's boiled. Always prepare your stuff ready first, otherwise you can take nearly all day I suppose, five, six hours doing things without your filtration running so I'll get everything prepared connect as much as you can before you disconnect your original fittings and that was a little bit of useful information here we go again, plan C, failed as you can see how soft that is and there's no way There's no way is that fitting on that. No chance at all. And this is the reason why I said earlier, always make sure you prepare all these things ready 
before you actually start fitting because if I'd have disconnected everything on my filter now my pump and everything else I'd have been the right old mess because I wouldn't have been able to do it and I just now I ain't got a clue what to do because this pipe will fit nothing and this will fit nothing so the retro bottom drain is a fail I don't know where to get from here so sorry about that it day work I can't use it what I thought I'd try and do is show you what I'm up against obviously a lot of you people out there with your ponds know all this bullshit anyway obviously, this is not a standard filter fitting these are what we refer to because of the koi tax because the price of the charger as we all know is a total rip off so I've adapted this to fit the retro bottom drain now with the retro bottom drain you get a number of little collars reducers that fits in that lovely the old style that come with retro bottom drain fits into that lovely as you've seen by my experiments I can't get that pipe onto that you can see it's exactly the same diameter I have got it on but it's blowed holes in it so then you've got I'm going to keep that colour in there got these type which again pushing I'll put tape on that to make it fit another one that'll fit that pipe perfect but look how small that collar is Not a catching else chance. I'm getting to see that. No way, how was I? Ha, how was I? And how was B? This one. Screwing fitting. That was pipe. I'll fit on it. Now I could, if it did work, cut that thready part off. Because that's the part I need. Then this collar. Too big for that. So that now fit. You've got three different fittings, three different manufacturers. About as useful as a chocolate bar in a desert. And that's what we're up against. So I really don't know how to get round it if I'm honest. I've got no more of these. It's pointless giving out buying any more of them because they're more basically the same. Probably thinking why do you go out and buy a piece of that? Like I said before, that's going to cost me like 56 quid. Craig, Scrag69 bought me length of pipe down, absolutely brilliant. Appreciate it. Look at that, fits on there, perfect look. And I can't reduce that to fit there. So I've got a dry bottom drain. Again, it's going back in the box. Back again. Flick it around, show what I got. A box of tricks. How many fittings do you have to buy to make one fit? So now, in all this box of glory. This is the collar I was trying to use, reducer for that one, as you know the pipe well fit. I've now found another collar, reducer, which will fit into there, quite tightly actually. Then I've only got this one, that will fit into there. Too small. I've tried that the other side. Too big. That looks like it's got tape on it. I'm going to try and take that tape off there. I never noticed that. See if that'll fit. Because I've got that. The hours 
will actually fit on that piece there, which I'm going to fit to there, which is probably an inch. I might just get away with an inch of pipe on there. So I'd rather have it just slightly longer, like that one there. So I'm going to remove this tape and see if that see if that'll fit. Well, I've had a look. That looks like a jointing tape there. If I turn it round, you can see the scratches in the plastic. Keep turning it. And there's another one there. It must be the mould. Unfortunately, there. I'll fit in that collar. Which means I've only got that little bit there. To fit me out well, you can see that look. It's having as wide as my thumb. So I've got a lot for the hours to hang on to. So I'm going to mess with this and see what happens. Plan A. The situation I'm in now, that collar there is tapered. It's an angle. It's not going all the way in. So what I'm going to do is just push that in now and got it stuck. So I'm going to try and get that out. Sand it down a little bit and hopefully get that collar down to there. And then cut that piece off there to there. That ain't really a lot at all for the hours. As long as I don't get a jubilee clip on it, it'll do it I suppose. But the last thing I want to do is lose pressure. So I'll cut this off, see if I can get this to fit. And then I shall return. Okay, then I've had to come back into me snooker room because the lads have got the radio next door. Just the old park side, gramble, bit of sand in it. Now that colour fits in there, flush. I suppose some people say, why they just glue it like that? But that's how it should go, and that's how I wanted it. So that's in love light. That now will fit in there. We'll go down there, we chop that off. I've just showed you that earlier on, so I'm not going to show you that again. Chop that off and rim that hole out. Ready for the pipe. Now, the biggest concern I've got now after all this, a lot of people when they fit these retro bottom drains, they use solid plastic pipe to get all the shapes of the pond. Normally square ponds, fairly straightforward. Mine's obviously flat bottomed and then at a slope like that. So I'm just hoping now that the pressure of this, when it bends in the pond, it down to that and lift the retro bottom drain off the bottom. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to get it like that and then curl neatly. What I might do is dry fit this to the retro bottom drain, see if the weight of the pebbles in the retro bottom drain will actually hold this pipe in place. Otherwise I'm doing all this with this piping for nothing because obviously if it tilts the retro bottom drain like that it's all for now, well work so that's what I'm going to do, dry fit it all put the length of hours on there, just push it on put the retro bottom drain in the water and then just see if it lifts it then dry it all off and glue it all if it does it does work so I'll chop this off, ream of that out fit these together and I'll show you in the water. I've decided not to put it in the water to test it so if I can keep that pipe in there I'll show you what I call a dry run so I'll turn this way obviously that'll be in the bottom of the pond and I was concerned about oh it's come out now I was concerned about the pressure on this pipe, if I can keep it to stay to show you, bending like that, that's more or less the shape it's going to be in my pond. I want it to go down to the bottom, along the bottom, up the side wall, and then into my filter house. And I was concerned that when this pipe was on, it would actually lift that like that. So I'm quite happy that that'll work that way. So, at the moment, things are looking up. 
got it all set up just to dry fit that fits on there lovely jubbly just how I want it to now I'm going to poke this pipe through the filter around the nexus I'm going to glue fit all this exactly as it is I'm going to leave this house pipe off for now this house pipe has got to go on to my water pump so then I can turn the water pump on and fill all the pipe work and the new pump when it's all together to fill it with water and see if it works we've all seen this before look at the algae in that already and that was done yesterday what I need to do now I need to I'm gonna flush this through first I might as well clean it now while I'm fitting the pump and then drain the water down as much as I can because I don't want this water back flowing into the pond which is what's going to happen so what I'm going to try and do is leave that valve shut cut this pipe to fit my pump and leave this attached because you can see that I have proper fitting so I'm hoping I'm going to get away with cutting this and joining the pipe with using this piece of pipe and then disconnect that oops we don't want to see because of the sun disconnect that pipe then and run the new pipe and the reason I'm not going to use that pipe is because that's been there about 12 months so that's going to be stiff in the shape that it's been and obviously through the frost that we've had in the heat so I'm going to take that off and connect the new piece of pipe to that just look at the amount of algae still in there and that's just a day so now I'm draining that off now I've got the pump ready there to connect just got to split this pipe fit it into there split that pipe if I show you it'll look better plank Cut this pipe here, so it'll fit on there. The other end should fit in there, sit there, all oh, that lovely. Because I've just brought the tray off the bottom of the pump. Disconnect that pipe. Oops, where are we going? That's the new pipe that's now going to the Nexus. So I've got to connect that to that pump, temporary. Put it in the shallow end. Turn that on to fill all the pipe work, the new pump, into the Nexus. When I see the water flowing, I can then turn my valve off. And then hopefully disconnect the pump and connect the bottom drain. And then hopefully it should be full of water and should draw it through. These are the problems you have when you do things on your own. Um, Dave has offered to help me out. My son had uh, football last night. Football tonight, football the night after and football Saturday. Um, as you know now, Dave's at work all day, so... He had been able to come round to help me, so I'm just trying to plod on. So the problem I've got now... I can get the pipe on there and I can put the filter in the middle. And then I'm going to have to pull the excess pipe through into the filter house and connect it to the nexus. Now the downside I'll be doing it myself is I've got to get in the pool because I need the retro bottom drain and the pump side to side. So then bowl full of water. So when I disconnect that off the pump, it'll fit on the bottom drain. So my first thing is connect this up connect the pipe to the filter, connect the pump up and get that in the middle so I'm back in the filter house I've disconnected the pipe as you know off my pump that's actually not in the pond now I've put it on the gravel so I'm hoping when I'm under that valve the water the back flowers instead of flushing all the crap back in the pond it'll flush it onto me garden
Let me get to see all the crap in there. Naturally, see all the crap that's in the bottom, holding in that cup there. So, anyway, now I've got to disconnect, cut this pipe, and join my pump up. So, this is the problem I thought I was going to have originally. You can see the pipe comes out of there, it should go down the liner along the floor. to the retro bottom drain. Now I've only got the water pump on there. And this is a bull joint there, but obviously because I'm on my own, it's been have to get in the water, get out, get in, get out. As you can see now, that is up on end, which I don't want. So somehow I've got to try and get that pipe to sit on the bottom. Because if it don't work, it's going to work with the retro bottom drain. I don't know whether you can see that now. I still can't get it to sit how I want it. It's still cocking up off the floor. Once I'm in the water, I should be able to turn the hose pipe onto the retro bottom drain. It's it's trying to twist from itself because obviously the pipe rolled up in a circle. I don't know whether you can actually see that pipe with the reflection. It's fighting against itself. So what I need to do is turn that pipe around. Hopefully. Again, back to the dreaded hose tiles. That's the old towels that they come with. No good to man the beast. Well fit my pipe. So luckily I've got two, but would you believe it? Two odd ones. Probably thinking it don't matter. But when you put that on there, that's the fitting the hose you've got to go on. You can see boy there you got one, two, three, four ribs on that one. Four ribs on that one and two and a half ribs on that to hold the pipe on this one for some reason is totally different you've got five, four, five and then two and a half ribs on that one if I show you, you'll see it better yeah you've got longer there, longer there and the big pipe that you need you've got a smaller fitting just go get me head round it all anyway that's all I've got that's all I can use Let's crack on. I've just now, just as I've took the collar off, there's a rubber ring on there. Now, I want to take that off. That gives me a lot more on that one anyway. I've took the rubber ring off that one, which allows me, instead of two and a half rings, I've got three to get the hours on. And then I'm going to put that ring in the bottom and hope it seals it because these are the pipes off the pump so here we go again again fittings I've removed this pipe from the bottom of my filter just so I was up and cut it measured it and cut it straighter it's a bit awkward where I am I've took it off and that pipe is smaller than the pipe I'm using so now I've got to cut that house tile down and then get a pipe to fit in there and that'll be the same for the pipe from there to the tap well the valve I'm going to have to cut the both ends of the valves down to match just out that the pipe fits on them tiles talking about fly larvae and my filters I've just cut that off how on earth did they stay in there Absolutely crazy. The pressure that's going through that pipe and it's just full of larvae and that must go through all our pipe work. Makes me wonder if that's where some of our bacterial issues come from. So I wouldn't have thought there was any way you could clean that out without taking it all apart. Well, I've never known anything so awkward for a bit of rubber hose and a bit of plastic. That sounds like it's broke. I've literally I had to knock that in with a mallet to get it on that connector because you cut the connector that small you've got nothing to grip on and obviously you grip that and it turns and when it's on the pump I've got no chance of getting it on the pump what a ball like that was 
that's my setup. Go to Tony League from here. Better change. The pipe is too small, too small. Struggle to get that pipe all the way around the filter and out the other side. Now what I've done, I've got the water pump in there, I've turned that on, I've sucked the water all the way up this pipe here, it's come through my pump, it's come all up there, I don't know that you can actually see its filter there. Now what I've done is, I've run it and I've turned it off and I've tried it two or three times turn it off turn the valve off then turn the power off and the water as you can see stays in there so now what I'm going to try and do now is take the water pump off in the pool and put the retro bottom draining without disturbing the water now if I turn the new pump on as it is now the new pump runs with the pump in the pond turned off if that makes sense so if I turn that pump on now it will run close the valve turn it off repeat it turn the power on then open the valve it runs without the other pump in the pond so I'm hoping when I put the retro bottom drain on it does exactly the same then the downfall is I've got to get in the pool to fit it. So here it goes. These are the things you do for your car. I've now got to get in the pool, remove the pump, attach it to the retro bottom drain and I'll fill the water that will solve itself back in the pool. I need the water in the pipe and I'm going to try and dry the pipe to get tight round it and we'll set up here. And this is going to be cold. It's where it goes a pisser. Sorry about the language. What? <laughs> oh. oh, no way, that's 20 degrees in there. Oh dear. It's playing. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that. It's full of water, which is what I want. I'm trying to dry these off because I've not got a stainless steel jubilee. What I'm going to have to do, I don't want to get that wet, but I'm going to have to wet it because I need the shape of the pipe to fit the liner. So I'm going to have to put it in, take it out, dry it, and then put this tape around the Jubilee pick. Concern about it floating with the weight of the point. Problem of what is it's floating. It's in the air bubbles. 
coming out. And I think once the pipe's on, it's going to be that steep, it's going to lift it up out of shape. Okay, as you can see, it's still releasing a little bit of air. I've got a situation where I want the pipe's gone exactly where I want it. I'm just hoping that the pump works. I want to turn it on now. That'll go in the deep end and I'll set that up to the green filter for another day. Just making sure there's nothing in the pool wall in here. I also need to get some cable toys. I've connected the airline. I just want to tidy it up. The cable toy, the airline to the pipe. Well, I'll sit in the water. So I'll get that done and then I'll get back to you. Okay, so here I've got double sided rubber tape. It is a bit awkward too. Probably a different way of doing it. You've got to peel the backing off. This is, I got a stainless steel Jubilee clip, so bought even if it was stainless steel, I think I'd still use this tape. So as the fish tail scratch themselves on it, it really is a pain to start. Let's stop that. Ok so there you go, it is a bit awkward to start, it is rubberized, it does stick, probably a different way of doing it than what I'm doing it here. I'm just trying to get it done now because we've got to catch Mason from skills, you can see it's stuck already. But it's probably a different way of doing it, I'm just trying to get it done now, I need to get the filter up and running. Got to catch my son from school. Even if this was a stainless steel clip, I still advise you use this tape. If you can get it underneath to do it. You say it's a, a rubber tape, double sided sticker. See all that clip so it don't rust. And also, 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 stop the fish from catching the soles on sharp edges. So I'm going to crack on with this. I need to get it all set up and running now. And if it works, I'll come back to you and show you. Oh, yes. Well, I've got the wife to help me out. Flip the switch, turn the tap. Nothing happened. So then I was stretching out, as you know, I've been in the middle of the pool. And then you can see that. I was uh, a bit disappointed that it day works. He's just gone to school to fetch Mason. I'm going to flick you around. And there you go. And all I've done is flick the switch and turn the tap and that goes to show that you can get a pump working above your water level now Dave's been harping on at me for quite a while sorry about the camera work about getting the pump directly in that shallow end directly to this nexus and he said he'd get a better flow. 10,000 pump exactly the same as a very pump. I've just got it on 90%. I'm showing you my chins. The flow on that is unbelievable. I don't know whether to put a pipe in there with an elbow and the elbow facing that way to give me more of a flow because that's supposed to be a vortex and it does seem to be doing 
it is, if I can see it, you can see it moving around, maybe it'll settle down. You can hear the arbor flower now breaking back into the pool, so it's all up and running now. And the flower in there is unbelievable. I'll just go away to go and save my pool. In fact, I'll walk you through now. I know how to duck fields. So there you go. After all my cushion and casing, the retro bottom drains in. I've got to get the airline sorted out. I ain't too bothered about that, you can see my ace down running. Far better flower coming out of that. I'll put the album back on that and get a flower, I think. I'll leave it to a couple of days now, I've got to tidy up. Mason's football's training tonight. And then, take all that pipe out there, get that pump back in the deep end, and get that rigged up to that pump there. Sorry, that filter there. Or even there. I'll rig the air down up tomorrow if I can, and then I'll show you. Sorry about the glare on the water. I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you. You've seen them all before. Oh, I'm trying to get me under cover the sun. I'm covering the camera. I'm going to tidy up now. Put everything away. All I needed was that filter working, and that's working a treat now. Sit on the bottom. Thankfully, as it should. Give it a couple of days to let the crud. Well, you can see it all floating around now. But I'm out of the moon with that 10,000 pump. What a difference that's made to the other one I got. Terry Gusta Show. You can run a pump above the water level. out of the pool now to turn that off you have to turn the valve off first so stop the flow water first then turn your pump off if you do it the other way around the water will suck back out your pump and then you have to go through all that again by putting the pump back on in the pond I hope you've enjoyed watching that little bit. Look out for part two when I get the air down running and the pump in the deep end running on the green filter. I also need pipe work to my waterfall, but the waterfall is going to have to wait probably this year because I need to block that side of the fence off. So I'll catch my air down and catch my pump in my green filter. And I've got a, a tap on that to adjust the flow because I don't want that overflowing. Thank you all for watching. Please share our videos, subscribe if you don't mind, and as always folks, don't forget to polish our thumb, you know you want to. Until next time.